From the very first Apollo mission or even the Cold War, space exploration has been the one thing that united us all. Whether it's our combined curiosity to find out what's out there, or simply the excitement of making it into the cosmos itself, space exploration has become a hot topic. Now, with the Artemis 1 launch date rolling around, we have more exciting news to share. Fasten your seatbelts because it's time for takeoff. First up, let's have a look at what went down at the Artemis launch. To advance in their historic lunar mission, NASA's Artemis 1 moon rocket returned to the launch pad on Tuesday night, August 19. On Wednesday, August 17, at about 10 p.m. Eastern Time, the massive space launch system, the SLS Mega Rocket, and its Orion spacecraft, known as Artemis 1, started rolling out to a launch pad at the Kennedy Space Center. It arrived at its location at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. From the KSC's Vehicle Assembly Building, the Orion started its more than 10-hour voyage Voyage while stacked atop the rocket. To get to launch pad 39B, the crawler carrying Artemis 1 hardware had to travel at a speed of about 1 to 2 miles per hour. On August 17, 2022, the Artemis 1 stack was positioned atop its launch pad at the Kennedy Space Center. At the Kennedy Space Center, the Artemis 1 was unveiled over the course of two nights on August 16 and 17, 2022. NASA made the decision to launch the rocket exactly two days earlier than anticipated. The team completed testing of the flight termination mechanism, the last significant task needed, before before the rocket was shut down and the final access platforms at the VAB, Vertical Assembly Building, were retracted, the agency reported on its Artemis blog. When the SLS rocket, atop its enormous crawler transport vehicle and movable launch platform, started the laborious journey, NASA wrote, rollout has commenced. Next up, let's take a look at what the Artemis 1 mission entails. NASA is meant to deploy the enormous Space Launch System Mega Rocket and its Orion spacecraft for crewed moon missions later this decade in Artemis 1, an unmanned test flight. The first mission in NASA NASA's bigger Artemis program, which aims to send astronauts back to the moon, establish a long-lasting moon base, and ultimately head to Mars, is Artemis 1. Formerly known as the Exploration Mission 1, Artemis 1 is scheduled to launch on August 29th with September 2nd and September 5th serving as backup dates in case of bad weather or other concerns. But just because Artemis 1 won't have any people on board doesn't mean NASA won't be collecting a lot of lunar science data during the voyage. Let's have a closer look. Once the SLS is in orbit, the Orion module will separate and fly to the moon. Before continuing 40,000 miles beyond the moon, its orbit will take it 62 miles above the lunar surface. The deployment, which is anticipated to take between 8 and 11 hours depending on weather, road conditions, and other technical issues, has not yet been given a full timeline by NASA. The module will splash down, well, hopefully not splash splash, in the Pacific Ocean, close to California, after a 20 to 25 day journey. How exciting! Coming up, let's have a look at who, or what, will be aboard Artemis 1. A scrappy group of mannequins and biological stars studies will travel deeper into space than any previous person has. Yep, you heard that right. Artemis 1 will transport the experiments and the fictitious crew. For more than a month, the system will fly in deeper space than the Apollo missions and study the radiation environment close to Earth and the Moon. That's not all. Omotenashi, a Japanese experiment, will also act as a lunar lander. This CubeSat will be the only one of the secondary payloads to execute a controlled landing on the Moon while other investigations are in orbit. Adding on to that, two water-seeking CubeSats, the first deep space biology experiment, and an asteroid-bound solar sail are among the mission's other noteworthy cargo. As part of an experiment to comprehend how the environment of space affects seeds, a variety of tree and plant seeds will also be on board. This custom was established by NASA in 1971 during the Apollo 14 mission. Other items that will be traveling to the moon in Orion include a 3D printed statue of the Greek goddess Artemis and the renowned A Trip to the Moon painting by Georges Méliès. What an unusual set of travel partners, and to think they do it before us. But that's the whole point, isn't it? They're taking the risk so we can be more prepared. Up next, Alexa aboard the Artemis 1? We know, we know, it keeps getting weirder. But apparently, a new version of Alexa called Callisto that was developed by Lockheed Martin, Amazon, and Cisco will also travel to the moon. Callisto aims to show how technology may be used by astronauts and flight controllers to make their tasks safer and more effective as humans explore deep space. Machines making lives easier, now even in space. It doesn't end here. The well-known Charles M. Schultz's creation, Snoopy Dog, will also take part in NASA's Artemis mission. Yep, we mean Snoopy the dog precisely. Also, we don't know about you guys, but we are loving this odd mix. But Snoopy's selection to go to space isn't random. Listen up. Since Scholz's comic strips depicting Snoopy on the moon during the Apollo program, Snoopy has been linked to NASA missions. You may ask why. Because its purpose was to snoop around the Apollo 11 landing site on the moon. The Apollo 10 lunar module was given the moniker Snoopy. A Snoopy figurine will serve as the capsule zero gravity indication for this voyage. Along with Snoopy, a Sean the Sheep toy from a department store will travel on Artemis. Additionally, four Lego minifigures will travel in Orion.
Orion. Have you heard of anything as fascinating as this? Next, let's have a look at radiation levels and other risks which warrant such precautions. The radiation environment for the astronauts on these lengthy lunar missions in the future will be far harsher than those on the International Space Station in low Earth orbit, which is why the Artemis 1's mission is to comprehend the dangers of radiation in space and to create protective measures. Not only that, the SLS Mega Rocket will be carrying numerous payloads for scientists. Future crew members who embark on lunar missions will be at greater danger due to leaving the shielding Van Allen radiation belts that protect International Space Station astronauts from cosmic rays. Scientists stated in a NASA briefing that was live-streamed on Wednesday, August 17. Ramona Gaza of NASA's Johnson Space Center stated at a briefing that understanding this risk is very critical for effective and sustainable space exploration efforts in deep space. Of course, a thorough threat assessment and preparation is the only way into space. The Matroshka Ashkrorad Radiation Experiment Science Team is led by Gaza and includes researchers from the German Space Agency, DLR. When Mare launches, two mannequin torsos named Helga and Zohar, only Zohar will be wearing an Ashkrorad radiation protection vest into space, equipped with 5,600 radiation sensors. Hey, even our science experiments had a controlled and manipulated setup. It all makes sense now. Next, let's find out what's NASA's endgame here. No matter how impressed we all are with our advancements in space and science, a question might remain, why? Why are we investing so many resources, time, and efforts into space? Will they not be better utilized back at home on Earth? What are we even hoping to achieve in space? Well, we may not understand it immediately, but numerous facets of daily life rely on satellite infrastructures, including internet connectivity, communications, and GPS navigation in various regions of the world. These satellites can only be launched into orbit with the technology and accuracy that have been developed over many years by international space projects. Through the use of satellite imaging, humans have now unprecedented access to comprehensive maps and photos of almost every location on Earth. These photos are also used by meteorologists to forecast weather patterns and provide storm warnings. Other scientific discoveries unconnected to space itself are also the result of space exploration. Numerous medical studies conducted in space have improved medical knowledge of the human body. So, you see, space exploration isn't just so we can find a habitable planet. We know you were thinking this. But also, it's crucial in making Earth itself a better place. Finding out fascinating stuff about space is an added bonus. Lastly, what's next on the docket? Considering that the Artemis 1 is a success, what's next? Apparently, Artemis 1 is simply the tip of the iceberg. Following the success of this mission, NASA has a whole campaign planned out for the future. Artemis 2. The Artemis program's groundbreaking crewed mission will advance human space exploration and travel farther than ever before. The four-person crew will fly the Orion Module 8889 kilometers beyond the moon after being propelled into space by the SLS rocket, complete a lunar flyby, and then come back to Earth. Artemis 3. After Apollo 17 in 1972, the third mission to the moon is scheduled to provide the first moon landing ever. Four astronauts on board the Orion Module will continue Continue the legacy of the Artemis 2 mission by docking with the Lunar Gateway and spending 30 days in space. So to summarize, NASA aims to launch the crewed Artemis 2 mission to circle the moon in 2024, followed by the Artemis 3 landing mission in 2025. That's a wrap on this video. What do you make of this space exploration journey? Let us know in the comments below, and we'll see you in the next video.